Hey, good morning, Gold Creek. My name is Alex. I'm so excited to be here with you. It's GC365, day 43. I got my buddy here, Micah. Micah, who are you? What do you do? Hello, my name is Micah. Um, I make sound happen over at the Woodenville campus. Yeah. Um, yeah, I make sawdust for a living and I've got a couple fun little kids. So that's my me in a nutshell. That is, that is Micah that's in a nutshell. There it is. So Micah does sound for us at Woodenville. He's great. He makes it sound great. <laughs> I hit the, <laughs> and he hit the microphone. <laughs> but we're going to keep rolling because you know what? Who cares? Because it's fun. Um, so today we're going to be diving into Exodus 34. Right now what happened is Moses just came uh, back down from Mount Sinai. He saw the people worshiping the calf. And he broke the, the Ten Commandments on the ground. So then, you know, what he's got to do, he's got to go back up and get more, uh, get the Ten Commandments again. So he's chiseling out the stone. Um, so one thing that, before we start talking about that, the one thing that stuck out to me reading this, um, I did some research about the, the Ten Commandments. Okay. Um, Mike, you work out. I do. You're, you're pretty jacked. You got... I, I wouldn't got... <laughs> call me jacked. I'm working on my dad bod right now. <laughs> so these, the Ten Commandments, from what we guesstimate are about 115 pounds. So this is 115 pound two slabs of concrete or rock. Yeah. Could you like hike up a mountain with that, like holding it? Again, they're not comfortable, I'm assuming. No. Well, what, <laughs> cause that's fine. Cause that's one of the things that stood out to me. So the house that I live in, um, yeah. I'm lifted above the floodplain. So I have to walk up a flight of stairs to get to my door. Some of you guys in apartments will know the, the pain, <laughs> yes. but you know, when you go to Costco and you're like, you got the one box and you try and cram as much <laughs> yeah. stuff in there as possible. I was just thinking about just how big a pain in the rear that can be just to make that one flight of stairs. Yeah. I'm not climbing a mountain, <laughs> you know, and, and he's got these two tablets and he's going up rocky, uneven soil. Yep. And you know, it says he's left early in the morning, but yeah. that's a heck of a journey for carrying, you yeah. know, quite a bit of weight. Yeah. And I don't think it was like, like again, it's, not, it's a mountain. So it's not like he's just walking up a trail that was pre-made for him. Like he's probably going up some crazy jagged areas and yeah. probably some close cliffs that would be pretty scary. So I'm assuming he's pretty, he's kind of jacked and in shape. And then he's going to go sit at the mountain for 40 days and for 40 nights without eating and just praying. Yeah. And then he's got to come down that with these heavy tablets. So <laughs> this guy's, uh, this is pretty in shape. Yeah. Uh, it's um, not something that I think I could do. That's yeah, what I'm no. sure. <laughs> I, I mean, I get, I get tired at work when I have to chisel out like a door frame or something yeah. <laughs> like that, let alone chisel a slab. I so. get tired from like running on stage on Sundays. So <laughs> that's how out of shape I am. But anyway, um, so yeah, so Moses is going up um, and he, com he sees God and God comes, appears to him in a cloud. And this verse really stuck out to me. It's verse six. Um, this is what the Lord says to him as soon as they kind of interact. It says, Yahweh, the Lord God. The, uh, the God of compassion and mercy, I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish, uh, I lavish unfailing love to, thousand, to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquities, rebellion, and sin. But, because there's always a but, I don't excuse the guilty. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and their grandchildren, and the entire family is affected. Um, I just thought that was interesting. Like As soon as he gets back up to the mountain, the first thing God does is he kind of reveals his character. Yeah. Right. God is like, I am compassionate. I have mercy. I'm slow to anger. But again, he says, but if you sin, if you, uh, you know, if you do these things, I'm not going to excuse you who are guilty, which I thought was pretty interesting, pretty cool. So like right away, even from back in the old Testament, we see that we serve a just God. Yeah. Um, I thought that's really cool. And you being a dad, I'm sure, I don't know, your kids get on your nerves and <laughs> you try to be compassionate and give them mercy and slow to anger. But there's like an, a line where it's like, yeah, you, you know, you still have to be punished or one. It's, it's twofold. One, yeah. one is you're punishing them because they did something wrong. Yeah. But ultimately one of the reasons I'm punishing them is because I want them to be a better person. Yeah. I, exactly. You know, and the, there's the correction in life Yeah. and it probably feels the same to them Yeah. when I'm like, Hey, quit using your, um, uh, scooter in the kitchen, which has been happening a lot lately. Uh, Love it. COVID has changed things. Yeah. For so, sure. I but it. when you're when you're flying around the kitchen, you know, and and smashing the cabinets, yeah. it's like. But, and I, you know, you try and talk um, gently and that sort of thing. But sometimes you got to bring a little bit of, like I call it, the foie in, like <laughs> foie you with it, and yeah. and, and bring the dad voice, and, yeah. you know, and it, it's funny because. God basically did that even just in his introduction. Like, yeah. look, I'm I'm pretty 
slow to a lot of things, but don't mess with me. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> always a line. Right? I've got the line. Yeah. yeah. And here it is. And I love that, that he just kind of draws it out. And like, this is who I am. So like here in the Bible is like when we first really learn a lot about God's character and who he is in this verse, um, really gets like, you know, uh, what is it like echoed throughout the, the entire Bible. Uh, we learn that God is compassionate, all these things, um, all the way up to Jesus, right? We, we yeah. continue to hear about this. Um, so I love that that's the first thing he does with Moses is just reminding him of who he is and that he's a God that still loves him. Um, is there anything else that stuck out to you in this passage, passage of Exodus while we were reading it? There was a lot. There a was little, a lot. There's yeah. A lot of, yeah. Like after that, obviously they break down like, hey, you shouldn't do this and you should do this and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, if, I thought it was interesting. If I'm honest, the one that really stuck out to me is when we started talking about the Sabbath. Yeah. And I mean, to the point to where he's like, if you don't do the Sabbath, you should be put to death. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you like, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, thinking about myself again, um, being that dad, I, I'm thinking of like, I know that wasn't necessarily Saturday through Sunday type thing, but like, yeah. if I think Sunday is going to be my Sabbath and I'm like, oh shoot, now I have to work extra hard on Saturday. So you're <laughs> yeah. like tending to whatever it is that, you know, all my usual dad yeah. life chores and then all of the things getting it ready. Cause you can't even light a fire. Right. Yeah. So you're like, you, you got to make anything. sure that like you're on top of everything yeah. going into that Sunday. So the preparation to, to allow yourself to have that time alone with God. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a lot of effort that goes into that, that sure. day previous. Yeah, for sure. A lot of planning and preparing and getting ready to actually yeah. rest. Cause if you don't, <laughs> if you don't do that, like if you don't make the fire, you'd like slack on getting up. Cause <laughs> yeah. if anybody's had a wood burning stove, you yeah. realize like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, if I didn't shut that damper, I got to get downstairs and put some wood in there. Yeah. Otherwise it's going to burn out. Yeah. So you got to be on top of making sure that that thing stays going because you good. can't, you know, yeah. you can't so that it's that just that preparation that, that it takes and being yeah. intentional yeah. with your time. Yeah, for sure. And that's that's one thing that I think that I sometimes lack is that intentionality. Same. Yeah. And I think that I'm gifted with that, um, that ability to put things off until the last minute. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. <laughs> and that's something Amen. that I feel like God's really saying right there. Like even through that, that thing, it's kind of that teaching us to, yeah. that you can't put things off yeah for sure um because yeah. i don't know I, you, <laughs> how many times have you not read the bible at the end of the night or spent your time or doing these things because we've spent too much time putting everything else in front you know yeah, be it exactly watching stupid things on youtube or <laughs> yes. just, you know even Netflix. things i can justify you know <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> stranger things just came out and i gotta watch the new season <laughs> you know but exactly. if, these are you know all these little things important things so yeah i don't know i love it no yeah i think it's obviously really important for us to view the sabbath as much as we can we need rest you know yeah. god's really telling us that we need that um so i love it and one thing that uh, last thing that stuck out with me with moses uh, is that when he stayed up you know, on the mountain for 40 days, for 40 nights, he came back down and they said his face was radiant and glowing. And like, people were like scared and like, wow, you're like, you just spoke with God. To the so point he wears cool. a veil. Yeah. You know, to like, cover his face. Yeah. Because God's like that, that, that was really cool. Um, like that God's presence just made that happen to him. So, and if I was understanding it right, it doesn't seem like it was a radiant that kind of went away. I mean, this <laughs> no. became a thing for yeah. him, right? It like he's glowing. <laughs> and it, it I don't know if you've ever like got a bad haircut or like I grew a mustache at one point yeah. that grew a lot of attention. And I can imagine just getting looked at for my, <laughs> yeah. for my hair or my mustache, let alone you're glowing. Your face is literally glowing. Yeah. And then on top of that, like now you're the guy walking around in a veil. Yeah. So he's still going to be get, still garnering kind of some attention. For yeah. That, you know, Oh, for sure. I just thought it was cool. Like how they, they kind of threw that in there and yeah, it's just different. All right. So now we're going to move on to the story of Jesus. Uh, this is in Matthew 27. Um, we were talking about this and like this part just wrecks me. There's not a lot to like pull out of like what's going on. Like literally Jesus on his way to get crucified and Pilate um, or has two people, right? Barabbas and Ju uh, Jesus, who he can let go. They're both uh, captive and the crowd is yelling for Barabbas to let go. And they're like, crucify Jesus. Um, take this guy. You know what I mean? And he's like, this is the guy you called the Christ. This is who do you want me to let go? And they let go of Barabbas. And Jesus gets taken. Um, and this verse really stuck out to me. It really wrecks me every time I read it because I'm just trying to like imagine this in my head. Like you don't want to, but like you imagine this in your head that they stripped him away of his, his clothing. They put a scarlet robe on him. Uh, they twisted together a, a crown of thorns. And they put it on his head and they mocked him. They put a staff in his hand and they mocked him and they beat him. They're, you know, all hail the king of the Jews. 
Um, they beat him with the, the staff that they gave him, and then they put his clothes back on, and then they led him to be crucified. And man, like, just thinking through the imagery, uh, it's just insane to think like someone, and that someone is Jesus, had to go through this suffering and this pain for us, so that way we can be set free. And it's one of those things that's like a movie when you're watching something happen, and you're like, don't do that, like, you don't want it to happen. Yeah. But the crazy thing is, like, we know what the outcome is. And I'm still li listening to like, or like reading this and just, man, like, why do they have to do this to Jesus? And man, I don't know. It just really wrecks me inside because it's just, that's just how much he loves. Again, going back to Exodus, mm -hmm. that love and compassion and that grace and that mercy for us that he came and he died on the cross for us. Like, because of this, even though it sucks to read and it's so hard to read, like this had to happen. Yeah. So that way we can have everlasting life with our father. So I don't know that. I know that's a whole lot right there that just came unpacked and you know it's just crazy though <laughs> but it, you know it, it goes again to show the love yeah I can't imagine being in that situation yeah where you're being mocked you're being beat you're being persecuted but yet you're God yeah you know exactly. like exactly fully God fully man he did you know he put the the ear back on the Roman soldier yeah you know like <laughs> This is a guy who's still in the midst of this could have stopped this. Yeah. He could have done whatever he wanted to. Yeah. But yet because of his love and because of his compassion, he was willing to put himself through this yeah. torture for us. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's not easy. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then again, if you kind of think about that as a father type thing, and yeah. like thinking of my kid going through something like this or God watching this yeah. and seeing this people do this to, yeah. you know, to Jesus is it's horrific. And then, but I mean, I guess the only real silver lining is knowing what is going to come. Yeah. It was going to come to, yeah, at the end of it. So it's just crazy, man. Like reading through again, like we hear the stories of Jesus and actually reading the kind of the details that he had to go through. That's where it just like kind of breaks my heart. And again, it makes me, it does make me like I'm excited, but like excited to know that Jesus is going to like overcome this. Like that's so cool that our God is just going to destroy death and that he go, went through this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anything else I got to you today in today's reading that you want to share with everyone? I mean, at this point, not really. I mean, we kind of yeah. touched on everything. Yeah, I, we did. To me, the to me, the big thing is just as I'm, I'm as I'm walking, as I'm reading, especially through this New Testament stuff, yeah. it's so easy to be kind of bummed out about it. And I'm yeah. not trying to give away the ending of the plot here, but <laughs> but he, but he, he does die but gets resurrected, right? And yeah. he and he does this for us. And so Yeah. It's good. Um it's just it's it's hard. It's a hard verse, and it's hard to to read through this stuff and think of, you know, Pilate washing his hands of all this yeah. this stuff, and just still stepping back. And I am a little bit reminded right now of some of the. I mean, it's it's a it's a very odd comparison, but just the mob mentality. Yeah. And then, oh, for real. You know, and this this thing of like being intentional, I guess, with not being caught up with yeah. the mob. Yeah. And that you can go down some dark places. Yeah. And, and, really? and I, I think that that goes back to that thing of being intentional and yeah. having that time to, yeah. to disconnect from the world and, and this sort of thing and, and take that s Sabbath with yeah. God so that we make sure that we're living this in the world, not, but not of it. Yeah. And we're able to no, kind of good to live that way. I love it. Yeah. No, it's really good. So preach it, Micah. <laughs> Get it. Well, awesome. Yeah. Um, the Bible's full of a lot of cool stories, a lot of crazy stories, lots of ups and downs. Um, a lot of stories that are really boring, but there's always something you can get out of it. Um, maybe not the first time you read it, but maybe the second time, maybe the third time. So I want to just encourage everyone who's out there listening, just stick through it. There's some cool parts and you'll you'll learn some new things as you go. It's a journey. Um, so there's there's some long hauls and there's some short hauls, but at the end of the day, it's going to be great having you. Uh, Micah, it's great having you. Thank you. Great having everyone watching. Um, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. See you guys. Later.